All right, it is starting now. Hey, everybody. Here we go. All right, everybody ready? Well, thank you, guys. Ready. Wait a second. Yeah, we love. Yeah, I think that was my turn in the middle of the hospital. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Okay. I inadvertently screwed up the whole thing. I'm looking at my right now. I'm almost pretty sure those microphones will pick up. <laughs> I mean, from what I know about microphones, I mean, I know much, but... <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, we good? Look upset. Everybody? First of all, thank you guys for coming. Um, Michael has obviously not come out publicly about this till now. I think this is a story that deserves telling, and I want to present it kind of in three parts to y'all. First going to be the background of what happened. Second is going to be about the video that you've all heard so much about. And then the third part is going to be our attempts to deal with Marriott about this incident and how do we correct it? Michael traveled to Phoenix on February 5th to cover the Super Bowl and related activities. He was staying at the Renaissance Phoenix Downtown Hotel, supposed to stay there from February 5th to February 13th. On February 5th, after performing his media duties, he returned to the hotel and was having water in the lobby bar. He obviously drew a lot of attention and he began to tell the people assembled in the lobby uh, stories. NFL stories, old stories. Several people offered to buy him a drink. He declined, saying he had work the next day. Uh, two of the gentlemen who offered to buy him a drink are the witnesses that we have here for you today uh, on Zoom. Phil Watkins and Bryn Davis. Phil's Australian. Uh, he's 10 or 11 hours ahead or behind, so it's a big effort for him to be here. And Bryn Davis is a Philly fan who's from Philadelphia, but he's in Europe right now. But they both agreed to come and, and talk to you guys about what happened. I think it's really important to understand where these witnesses come from. This is not someone that we found through an investigator. These witnesses called in uh, to a show hosted by a guy named by Tony Bruno. And Tony Bruno called us and gave us their names. When we first talked to these gentlemen, they said, I just read about in the paper what happened last night. I was sick to my stomach. I, I have a wife and kids, and I, I was sick with what happened to Michael. You'll see uh, on the video these gentlemen. But these guys and some other eyewitnesses and other people that have come forward asked Michael to take a picture with them. He said, I'm not going to take a picture in a bar. It's a bad look, uh, but I'll go out by the front door of the lobby and take pictures with you. This is where the video starts that I have seen. And so that I can lay the scene out for you. The video is, it appears to be from behind the front desk of the hotel. It's certainly a desk. It might be the concierge desk. Facing out this way, where on this side is the uh, entrance to the hotel, main entrance and lobby. And on this side is the lobby bar. There's nothing separating them wall-wise to the lobby bar. It's just the hardwood floor versus the carpet on this side. And then there's a big pole kind of right in the middle. When you first see the video, Michael is outside taking pictures as these guys will describe to you. And the accuser here is behind the front desk of the hotel. The uh, accuser then, as she sees Michael coming back, walks out from behind the front desk. And it appears to me to be approaching Michael and his group. Michael's group's coming in this way. Michael doesn't clearly, and no one in the group notices her yet. Unfortunately, the exact moment that they meet is behind the pole. So you can't exactly tell who talked to who, but I believe the witnesses will clean that up for us. They both meet, and then they walk to where they're in the middle of the lobby. And remember, this is a public lobby with tons of people going back and forth. When they first greet each other, they shake hands, and Michael starts to talk to her. Uh, Michael, in this interaction, touches her a sum total of four times. He shakes her hand at the beginning. He shakes her hand at the end. He one time 
uh, touches her on the elbow. As many of you who have interviewed Michael knows, he does when he talks for a very brief moment. And one other time, he, he buckles over laughing, and he kind of brushes her with his hand against her other elbow. That is it. She clearly never acts upset. She doesn't back away from Michael. She doesn't act like there's any kind of problems going on there at all. The conversation lasts about a minute and a half. As I said, <clears throat> they shook hands and then walk away. I want to talk about our attempts to, to figure out what happened and right the situation and what went from there, okay? Michael gets woken up basically in the middle of the night and told he needs to, to leave the hotel. He at that point in time doesn't know who's making allegations, what happened, why, anything. We did not know anything about who this person was or exactly what the allegations were until literally yesterday. And we had tried repeatedly to find out. When it happened, Steve Mandel asked to meet with the folks at the Renaissance Hotel out in Phoenix. They granted him a meeting. He believed that the meeting was gonna be with the head of security, the general manager, and someone else at the hotel. When he showed up for the meeting, the head of security had been excluded, said he was not going to be in the meeting, and he met with two other, the two other individuals, the GM and the head of marketing. I have their names, but I don't think that's relevant now. They absolutely refused to give him any information about what the allegations were against Mr. Irvin. Steve offered to allow Michael to be interviewed by their security. He offered the names of these witnesses that had now come forward via the radio station to be interviewed by security. Renaissance declined, would not talk to Michael, would not talk to the witnesses, said, we don't comment on anything. In fact, wouldn't even give Steve the name of one of the people that he was meeting with. Throughout the week in Phoenix, repeated attempts were made to get the Renaissance to interview these folks to clear Michael's name. Again, as you already know from the papers and the media, he had been taken off of NFL Network, he'd been taking off a, a show on ESPN, and obviously he's very, very eager to clear his name and clear up these allegations. Well, how do you do that when you don't even know what you're being accused of, and how do you do that when the people that are making the allegations won't tell you what they are? So obviously we didn't have the video and we didn't have any meetings with the witnesses, so I had to file the lawsuit. We filed the $100 million lawsuit in state court uh, in Collin County because that's where Mr. Irvin lives. That's where we felt like the majority of the damage was being done in this case. As you've seen, the state court judge immediately ordered production of the video that we believe would clear Michael's name. A few hours before the deadline to produce the video, Renaissance did a legal maneuver where they removed the case, Marriott, removed the case to federal court. In federal court, I think they believed everything would slow down, but we filed an almost identical motion for expedited discovery in federal court that the federal judge granted as well. And as many of you have reported and seen, the deadline to give us the information was yesterday. When I appeared yesterday to get the video, to see the video, I was not allowed to make a copy of it. I was not allowed to take a copy. I was not allowed to use my cell phone to make a copy. We believe these things were in violation of the court's order. In fact, before I went back to view the video, I was asked to empty all my pockets and search me so that I couldn't have any recording devices. I absolutely declined and said I'm not going to do that but I'm not going to record anything without your permission either. All during the viewing of the video, I was required to sit in a room with the other counsel, opposing counsel, watching me, seeing what I was doing. So I was not free to talk about what was on the video, and certainly I don't have a copy that I can even talk to my client about it. Now, what is so damning about a video that was taken in a public lobby that they're now using to try to destroy this man's livelihood and reputation, that they won't just release it. 
we shouldn't even have to be in court with this. Marriott, I believe, should come forward. And in fact, I made wow. a statement to the Marriott Council that I think is uh, pretty telling. I said, would you rather like the press to hear my description of what the video shows, or would you rather just show them the video? Well, clearly, you know, is answered by the fact that I'm here describing it to you. Wow. Um, no video. We have filed a emergency plaintiff's motion to enforce court order to try to get the video. It was filed this morning. You can certainly go uh, on the docket and get a copy of it if you want. We're hopeful we'll get the video to share it, but wow. we think we're far enough along in the case now to say this case is nonsense. It really is. Uh, Not our case, but the allegations are nonsense. And we need to immediately get Michael back to work. And I believe that Renaissance needs to apologize to him. With that, I think Mr. Irvin has a statement he'd like to make. Here we go. Here we go. I, I want to start by saying I, I appreciate all the support that I've gotten from everybody, from people and from friends. And I'm not talking about just in this moment. I'm talking about over the years, people that have followed me, my whole career, the peaks, and certainly through the valleys. But this sickens me. This sickens me. Because in this great country, this takes me back to a time where a white man would accuse a black, a white woman would accuse a black man of something. Yeah, me too. And they would take a bunch of guys that were above the law, run in the barn, put a rope around his foot, and drag him through the mud and hang him by the tree. Not a thought about what would happen, not an investigation, not after repeated attempts of people trying to go and say, guys, he, here's what really happened. Here is what really happened. Here are witnesses that'll say this. Here's witnesses that'll say that. They said, we don't want to hear. We do not want to hear. How can you, how, how can I defend myself if I don't even know what I'm defending myself against? They asked me, they said, do you remember this girl you met in the lobby? I work and I live in hotels. I stay in hotels all year long from August to September. I meet people every day walking in and out of a lobby. I couldn't even tell you what she looked like. I don't know. I don't even know who I'm talking about when I'm talking about I'm supposed to do something. I, I, it just, this just blows my mind that in 2023, we still dragging and hanging brothers by a tree. That blows my mind that I have no opportunity to defend. I don't even know what I'm defending. And, and, and absolutely, to not listen to the court, Marriott, Marriott is above the law because I still haven't seen this tape. I haven't seen this tape. I want to see what I'm being accused of, why I've had put my whole life on hold, why my, why my family had to endure it. If I did something wrong, I'll, hey, I'm, I'll, hey, I'll suffer the consequences of me doing something wrong. But if you did something wrong, you meaning them, then they should suffer the consequences of what they did wrong. It's just sickening. Thank you, Michael. Um, we're now going to allow uh, these gentlemen here. And I guess um, first we've got a Phil. Can you hear me? Yeah, good morning. Phil, if you would, uh, you're free to go if you want, Michael. Uh, Phil, if you would, tell uh, the reporters here what you saw that night at the Marriott Hotel. Yeah, certainly. Uh, good day, guys. Um, so, myself and my business colleagues, we were out in the front lobby, obviously, with Michael. Uh, it's the first night I've, I've ever met Michael in my life. He was a very jovial uh, character. He, um, yeah, basically uh, was, was, was a great proponent of the sport. Um, he loves the NFL, clearly. Um, so he gave me a great introduction to the NFL. It's the first time I've ever heard about it. And essentially, obviously, we had some fan white pictures um, and then re-entered the lobby. Um, I was checking my phone when a young lady uh, approached Michael and there was nothing really untoward out of the interaction because uh, essentially I was checking the pictures and basically I heard some laughter. I looked up, um, there was a few handshakes. Uh, 
there was some more laughter and they went their separate ways. Uh, Michael went back to the lift and obviously continued on his night. Um, I take it he went back to his bedroom and the lady returned to roughly around the bar area uh, where we actually, um, you know, the three of us who had just had the picture taken uh, returned to the table. So, yeah, there was no, like I said, it was a very jovial conversation. Um, there was no reason to look at it uh, as anything untoward. Um, and, yeah, the lady returned to work, so Phil, we carried on and on. Phil, are you, are you an NFL fan? Uh, no, no, I'm not, actually. Uh, believe it or not, I, I apologise to the guys here in Dallas, but uh, the Super Bowl uh, that weekend was the first game I've ever watched. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so I, I didn't know who Michael was before and, this event. And I'll just ask you one more question. Did you see anything at all that would cause you concern or you thought was inappropriate in Mr. Irvin's behavior towards this woman? No, not at all. Okay. And you're aware that you're actually on the video that I've seen, and so we know that you were there, correct? Yeah, that's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to, to Bryn real quick. I don't even know how to swap that. It should. Brandy, if you start talking, I think we'll be there. Can you guys hear me? There you go. Uh, Brandy. Uh, good morning, if you, everybody. If you yep. tell your experience and then tell about the terrible, horrible football team you root for, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> <The Eagle. laughs> no, yeah, so so like Phil had said, we were we had a business meeting around, I don't know, a little after 10 uh, at the Renaissance, and I am from Philadelphia, so we recognize Michael, the other gentleman I was with. We, we noticed Michael on the other side of the bar, which was pretty cool. I mean, you know, I, I've known who he was since we were little. I'm an Eagles fan, so I grew up hating him, but it was still exciting to see him. And uh, so, you know, we offered to buy him a drink because we thought it'd be cool to buy Michael Irvin a drink. And uh, he came over and said, you know, sorry. He said, I have, I have ESPN tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I can't take a drink, but I really appreciate it. And then we started going back and forth about Jalen Hurts being a fantasy or being a uh, the dynasty, blah, blah, blah. And had a really cool, quick conversation. He saw that I had my uh, my phone in my hand and asked if I wanted to get a picture, uh, which was nice because obviously that's what I wanted to do. We stepped outside, uh, took a few pictures, and uh, came back in. And when we when we entered back in, um, the you know he a, a woman had come around the corner kind of met Michael at the corner. They had, they had a very brief interaction that was, you know, super, you know, friendly, lots of laughter. And Michael went back to his room. I went back to my seat. And two days later, I, I read about the story that we're talking about now. Wow. Um, at any point in time, did you see anything that caused you concern, you thought was inappropriate? Uh, Mr. Irvin should have done that, just untoward. Did you see anything like that? Well, screen froze. It's frozen Zoom. He is in Europe. Damn. Um, guys, if he comes back, I'll do it. Uh, other than that, I think that concludes our press conference. Um, these gentlemen have offered to take questions if you want to. Michael We're not Steve. going to take questions based on the fact that we still have this current lawsuit going on. So I appreciate everybody showing up today. Uh, wait, wait, let me say this. Okay. You know, I kind of lost it just listening to, to Phil talk. He's crying. Because I'm struggling. This is what I struggle with. You know, you try to, and you try to be an ambassador of the league and also understand that God has blessed me and, and given me a platform and try to touch people, try to raise people, try to lift people up. I, and, and, and I don't know, I, I met a lot of fans, but I've always tried to be good with people. You know, I'm struggling now saying, do I determine, do I not talk to people? What do I do? You know, because of this kind of a situation. I know I didn't do anything wrong. I know I didn't do anything wrong, and I was trying to do everything right. So it's just, you know, though, though, though I say that, I got to come back to this moment. Had I not said to these guys, you know what, you cool guys, let's go outside and take that picture, you know, then they wouldn't have been right there with me. And that would have been a moment that I've had alone, and I know nobody's going to listen to what I say. Nobody, still, at least Mary, I don't want to hear what we have to say. Don't want to hear what I have to say. No one don't, don't even care to share it. So, you know, I just got emotional thinking about it because I'm struggling with that on what to do moving forward after I deal with all of this. That, that's all I want to say, guys. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thank you. And that's it. That is uh, what has transpired. Um, I will 
if you're watching on this early video, um, I will upload from my streaming software the clip and you can watch the clip. Shout out to WFAA uh, News for streaming this. And uh, as I was watching the stream here, I saw some uh, saw Lola. What's up, Lola? As well as some other fans that were actually watching live on YouTube as well. Uh, Glenn Capers, Ronnie Paris, and um, uh, yeah, shout out to all you guys giving me a shout out and stuff watching this. Um, this clearly is Michael Irving fighting back. This is Michael Irving, which, which I, I still can't believe that Marriott will not release this tape to the public because it must be damning. They did the absolute positive minimum um, that they could as far as releasing the tape is we're going to show you the attorney in the room with our attorneys. We're not going to let Michael Irvin see it. We're not going to release it to the public. And it is a damn shame. I, I, I'm just, Michael Irvin is 100% correct when he talks about this is like a modern day lynching. You think about the civil rights movement that started after Emmett Till was accused basically of whistling at a woman. They came to his house, 13 year old child, took him away, brutally beat the hell out of him, tied him to a cotton mill, uh, cotton gin fan and threw him like a piece of garbage into the river. And in some regards, this is similar to what's happening. Marriott does not want to hear Michael Urban's side of the story. They don't want to give any evidence. They have gone through and taken your livelihood away and aren't being forthright here. Um, this definitely is a big loss. This is definitely a big loss for Marriott right here. When you think about what was just put out there, Michael Irvin, you know, getting emotional, crying, literally tying this into a modern day lynching, uh, th this literally pointing out that Marriott has circumvented the law to get retribution against Michael Irvin and that they are fighting tooth and nails against the court system. It's crazy to believe that this is how it's gone. I appreciate each of you guys and you ladies watching this. Um, we'll definitely be talking about this quite a bit today. Um, I will have more later on as this becomes available. Appreciate you.